All right. Hello, everyone. Uh, thanks for, for joining uh, this session on PWA windowing. Um, I'm Tom Buckley. I'm a product manager on uh, Chrome OS, uh, working uh, with our web apps platform team. Uh, and we're um, very excited to talk uh, about this today. Uh, as Chrome OS uh, and as many other platforms do, we care a lot about um, uh, we, we see web apps as like a core part of our, our system and uh, want many of them to be standalone experiences for users. Uh, and so we're very excited to see all of these uh, features being proposed or being worked on uh, to improve, uh, to help more users end up with uh, standalone PWA windows. Um, so I'm going to start off on, on uh, talking about tab window mode here, but then we'll, we'll pass off uh, to talk about Windows control overlay, declarative link capturing, and URL handlers. Uh, so to start off, uh, one feature that, that's uh, being proposed and is currently behind a flag is tabbed window mode. Uh, this is a uh, mode for your PWA that you can set in your manifest where it will end up with a uh, tab strip at the top. Uh, so here you can see an example of what this would look like with Google Docs. Um, as a default, uh, you would end up with uh, the ability to just create uh, new tabs, which would take you to the, uh, the uh, landing page of the, um, of the PWA, and then you could navigate within that. Uh, clustering these together and avoiding UI that comes from um, the uh, URL bar, extensions, whatever else at the top. Uh, so still keeping that single app feel. Um, there are many considerations that come along with this. Uh, in particular, how do you um, move these tabs between the browser and the standalone window? Um, something that we're looking at is uh, using the uh, open with dialog in the browser and the Omnibox to let people open it with the app of their choice. Uh, and then uh, from the tab PWA, being able to right click any tab and transition it back to their browser. Um, though you know, alternatives could be that you can drag them back and forth and, and you, uh, UI will change. Um, this is just the uh, direction that we've been looking so far. Um, and we're also interested in future directions uh, to, to take this after the initial uh, version. Um, one pattern in particular that we've been interested in is what we've been calling the gallery and document pattern, where there's a um, pinned gallery view tab, uh, and then documents each open in a dedicated tab. And in this case, clicking the new tab button will actually open a new, create a new document for you. Um, this is something uh, that you know could work well at an app like Google Docs or uh, uh, something like Figma. Um, so that's that's all we have for tabbed window mode. Now uh, we'll talk about window controls overlay. All right. So um, I'm going to try to present. I think. So do uh, excuse the awkward me trying to um figure out how to use these tools too many buttons do you want me to stop presenting or i'm also happy to just step through the slides if you okay you oh, got this. okay no i'll, I'll right. cancel mine okay uh apologies um Okay, so then, uh, hi, I'm Amanda, and I'm working on the PWA team at Microsoft, and I'm here to show uh, window controls overlay. Uh, so the purpose of the feature was to offer developers a more native-like app experience by swapping the full width title bar with an overlay, freeing up space for developers to customize that area that was once consumed by the title bar. So these screenshots you can see in the back is a standalone title bar. And in the front, you see a window controls overlay. Um, on the left is Windows 10. On the right is what we have in, um, on Mac currently. And we're still working on Linux, so that's why there's a no screenshot for that one here yet. Um, for Mac, there's going to be two overlays since the window controls are normally on the left, but the app controls are on the right when the browser is in an LTR language. So to fill the space next to the overlay, like you can see in the frontmost window, there are two options, using CSS environment variables and JavaScript APIs. 
The four CSS environment variables, title bar, area, x, y, width, and height, describe the available rect, which in this case is on the left of the overlay. Um, additionally, um, there are JavaScript APIs that can achieve the same goal, although naturally they're not as performant. Um, get bound and client rect returns the same rect as the CSS environment variables. Uh, visible returns true when the overlay is enabled and returns false otherwise. And there's a geometry change event that fires whenever the size or position of the overlay changes. Since the title bar is where users expect to be able to drag the app, we've enabled the existing WebKit app region CSS property to allow developers to define draggable regions in their web content. And we plan to standardize this to app region. Um, so this is an example of how a dev could lay out their content using window controls overlay. Here I'm using CSS environment variables for a smoother resize. The title bar container, which is um, outlined in red, um, ensures or it consumes the full width of the window um, and fills the background color to match the theme color set in the manifest or meta tag. This ensures that there's no visible separation between the custom title bar area and the overlay when resizing the window. Using absolute positioning, it sets the top edge to title bar area Y with a fallback to zero if the app is opened in a normal browser window or an unsupported browser version. The height is set to title bar area height, falling back to any arbitrary uh, fallback height. And the entire region is set to be draggable via WebKit app region drag and in the future app, app region drag. The title bar, um, which is the area on the, the or sorry, described on the right, uh, highlighted in yellow. Um, it holds the title, which here is example PWA, and the search box. It fills the title bar rect by setting the left edge to title bar area X and the width to title bar area width. Although it's not shown here, the search box is set to be non-draggable to ensure that the user can select the text inside of the uh, input box. So here is a mock-up of what an app could look like if it chose to implement window controls overlay. This is only a mock, um, demonstration purposes only. Um, so you can see in the upper right that the window controls and other PWA-related bits are still available, but the empty space on the left has been filled with app-specific controls, including navigation buttons, a search box, and a profile button. This now feels much more like a native app um, compared to a similar app served as a standalone PWA. So currently, this is available on Win10 and Mac, and they're both in uh, aiming for Dev Trial 92 and Origin Trial maybe 92, 93, um, because uh, the, we're kind of waiting on some of the Linux work to wrap up. Um, and yeah, that's all I have for Window Control Overlay. Hi, I'm Alan. I'm from the Sydney Chrome OS office, uh, and I'll be presenting the next section on declarative link capturing. Let me just present my tab. All right. Um, I assume you can see that. Uh, right. So my one's fairly simple. Uh, in the web app manifest, you specify capture links and then a behavior that you would like. And this is what it would look like if Twitter captured links. So I'm being sent a link to Twitter. And normally, if you click that, it will just open in the browser. But if you have a web app installed, that's not ideal. Ideally, you're going to be using the web app in your natural, like everyday sort of flow. And so by having a link capturing, capture links existing in the uh, client navigates that would find a window or open a window if none are open and just navigate that window to the URL that you that you clicked. Um, and this would all be behind user preferences as well. So like apps can't just start grabbing your your links without your permission. Um, and this is currently an origin trial for Chrome OS in 91. Uh, these are the three modes available. None is just default, no capturing at all. New client means to open a new window every click um, because navigating an existing window would lose 
lose states, lose context, and that's not ideal for, for every app. Uh, and then existing client navigate. Um, one thing to note about existing client navigate, if you've got an on before unload event handler, that will still fire. So that's that's when you're like filling out a form and you navigate the way and the browser says, oh, did you mean to leave this page? Just confirm uh, that that will still happen. So for some apps that may lose content, they've got that, that safeguard. Um, so it's a pretty simple feature, but there is a bit of um, future direction. For example, uh, we want to create existing client events uh, and instead of actually navigating the web app window, it will fire an event on the page to tell it, hey, the user is clicking this URL. Here's the URL they're going to. Uh, this, this ties in with the launch queue spec that's that's going on for file handlers. Um, and this is all sort of made up. This, this, this spec doesn't exist yet. This is just uh, ideas. But the idea is for the page to receive the events to know what URL and for the page to decide how to handle that. So they could send, they could show their own UI for, hey, um, you're about to go here. Do you want to leave this context? You know, so they can show their own um, whatever they want to do. Uh, and another one is to capture links in the service worker. So the page's service worker would receive an event and it can see the clients that are open, all the different windows that are open. And for example, if you're clicking a link to a document and the document's already open, ideally the page would just reopen that or just focus that page. Um, and here's a here's a fun example where it's like, uh, if there's no clients, just open the window. Otherwise, pick a client randomly and uh, fire the launch event into it. Like you can do whatever you want. This this service worker event is a sort of catch-all for whatever else whatever other behavior um, sites might want to do. But that's that's sort of much further in the future to work that sort of spec out. Um, and then another API that's being worked on by Microsoft is URL handlers. Uh, and this is very much in the same vein as declarative link capturing, but it extends the scope of links that can be captured. So. Here's an example of a site, it's got a manifest, and it wants to capture um, link navigations on site B. And you can't just capture any random sites, that's sort of, that wouldn't be okay. So we require that site B acknowledges your existence um, by serving a, a web app asso origin association file under dot well known uh, and listing, identifying you by your, oops, by your manifests um, and then actually specifying which paths are okay and which paths are not okay to be captured by, by that other site. So this would probably be used by sites who have just different subdomains. Like uh, I know Steam has like uh, help.steampower.com. Other sites have their languages as their subdomains. And so they would need to do this to do cross origin link capturing, even though they're more or less the same app. Um, and that is targeting Chrome 92 origin trial for Windows, Mac, and Linux. Um, I don't know if it's confirmed or, but uh, that's that's the target. Um, and that's about it for this presentation. Does anyone have any questions? I had a quick question for the uh, um, annotating the um, uh, header of a PWA. Um, it seems like there's a lot of styling opportunities in there. And I'm just curious to know, what's the use case where the PWA wouldn't just want that whole space? Um, why, why do we have this um, relatively complex styling capabilities? Um. I guess so you're saying like why why not just use window controls overlay all the time or why have like um... it, it would appear that we we're giving the um, the developer a lot of opportunity to take part of the space or to change their position within that space or the the, the sizing of the title bar which I don't know how that would affect the title bar um, wouldn't it wouldn't an alternate approach be just to like they get that whole space and they get to throw whatever style they want within there or whatever controls they want within there? Oh, are you saying the like the 
preset area in the upper right in most of those images. Um, I guess the, the reason why we have to keep that, that one little nook in the corner is um, like the security, accessibility, like a bunch of like core functions to the browser that um, nobody yes. wants to uh, I was reading the next slide with the uh, styling controls. Um, uh, oh, so that was just an example of something you could do with the controls then. I'm not sure I follow the question. So if I can jump in, the those variables describe the space that's not used by the system that is available to the web app. So in the on that particular image, in the middle picture, that's what you get if you use the Windows control overlay but don't do anything with it. Um, and then the bottom picture is because you're able to use those environment variables, you can the web app can build content that fills in that hole. So the web app doesn't get to decide how big that hole is, but it can position its own title bar content within that hole. How does the app opt into having that, essentially having its content area extend up to the top of the window? Um, I guess I did skim over that. Um, it was on that first slide. It's the um, display override window controls overlay. So as long as that's the, okay. the primary display override. Um, I have a question relevant to that, that slide. Go, go back to the one with the green. Yeah, so uh, on um, basically the, the, the assumption here is that the app is going to use those environment variables to draw a green, a green rectangle to line up exactly with the rest of the, the green title bar that's supplied by the operating system. That suggests that there's, there's an assumption that sites are going to make that the operating system is going to draw a green title bar. Um, are we specking that anywhere? Because as far as I know, the current specs before Windows Control Overlay, they don't actually mandate that the browser or the, or the OS draws a title bar in, in the theme color. They, they just say you can use a theme color however you like, and we we happen to have implemented it that way. So in the window control overlay spec, are we going to say you must draw a, a rectangle in a flat color with no gradient, no shading, etc., so that so that when the when the site draws that rectangle, it will line up seamlessly? That seems like an appropriate thing to dictate. <laughs> So we might dictate it in, in only in Windows Control Overlay, so that if you're not in Windows Control Overlay mode, you still have that that freedom as a as a user agent developer. Uh, Josh, go ahead. Oh, I was going to ask a follow-on question, which is, I think in the next slide, maybe the one after that, uh, Amanda, you've got yeah, this one. You've got in your example for the title bar container, you hard code the background color to match what's in the manifest. I'm wondering if, like, building on what Matt said. Is it required, or should it be required that the, the 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 theme color matches? I'm wondering about things like dark mode or in high contrast mode, where the web app may not get the color it requests. Um, should they hard code the background color, or should there be another environment variable which is gives them the background color? Yeah, that's actually a good point, um, especially for for high contrast modes. Um, and I think that's something we'll have to to follow up on um, because otherwise, yeah, you you do lose this seamless experience. Uh, a spanner to throw in with that is if you turn on tabbed mode is hmm, can you turn on tab mode as well? I guess not. Hmm. I, I would argue that those two combine. I could imagine some some productivity sites would like to have some toolbar controls up the top as well as tabs. Yeah, but at the moment, the spec isn't really made to have those at the same time, is it? Yeah. I, I think we, we, we talked about this in the oh, Sorry, Liz. I, I'll note that uh, the browser that I'm using right now, which is Chrome, has both tabs and this neat little uh, down arrow search tabs thing that they could only implement if they could use both features at the same time. So. Yeah, uh, we, we have talked about this. I, I'm, I'm pretty sure with, with all, all of the, at least with Alan and Amanda, we, we talked about this a long time ago. And what we said when we designed Display Override was um, 
this was this was by design that we were talking about a, a possibility of, of a display override where you can mix and match all these different things and you can have a, a bag of them and and then the browser would have to find out a way to um, to to combine any any permutation of these and we said that would be that would be uh, like we, we would have to think of every possibility so instead let's make it that you can only have one display mode and and so that means you won't be able to combine them at this stage but in the, in the future we can explicitly design a new display mode that is tabbed window control overlay mode and then we can at that point write a spec and think clearly about uh, how it's going to look in in the browser and um, I, I think it, it does make sense to, to have these, as Dominic said, uh, but, but it's something that we would, we would purposely add in the future. So we might add a tab controls overlay one day. Yep. And it could have restrictions about the title bar that, that don't apply in either of these modes on their own. And, and we can change the API as we need to fit this new format because the site is opting in. Yep, and you can use display override to, to pick which which one you want to fall back to if if the new mode is not supported. Assuming that all of the tabs with the tab mode are running under the same origin, you could probably allow the site to draw its own tab UI. As in window controls overlay inside the tab? No, just Windows control, window control overlay replacing the tabs, but having an API to query for what are the tabs and draw it draw them itself. Ooh, that sounds scary. As long as, all, of, as, long as all the tabs are within the, within the application scope, I don't, I think that's fine. I, I think it'd just be a lot of work for web developers. Like they'd be re-implementing a tab system. I'm sure they'd love that. One of the one of the benefits of tabbed mode is, I mean, sites are already trying to do this themselves with like, file tabs in, in text editors. And one of the downsides of that is they don't, th there's not as much like isolation between those components. Your, your page can become huge holding all this stuff, whereas browser tabs can be like much more performance isolated from each other. Um, so I'd say that's, that's one main benefit that sites would like to grab into the browser tabs for. I just wanted to throw in that the uh, the last feature that was discussed seemed an awful lot like um, uh, mid '90s programming on Windows with the open uh, command and in the registry you could say what you wanted to have happen when a when a file got clicked and what command you wanted sent to your application. Um, it's cool to see all things coming back around to that capability. But I was going to ask you in your initial spec, hey, what about sending a command to it? And then you went on to talk about it. So that was that was very, very pleasant. Yeah, there's definitely demand for um, having a bit more control. And I think service workers is, is a like th this is a nice balance between very declarative, like fixed forms and very easy to use versus giving you service worker and letting you shoot yourself in the foot because like you might do the completely wrong thing. Uh, or it requires a lot of complicated code to do the right thing, um, but you can still have the freedom to do that how, how you like. I remember when this was discussed previously, I think like the principle I was I was pushing for was like each of these capture links, uh, you know, modes should be implementable using a service worker and some boilerplate code, but it's annoying code to get right. And so we can just build it in by default if you pick one of the keywords. The I think service worker will also probably have a big performance hit versus the others. We can, you know, straight, we, we don't need to launch a V8 instance or anything to, to do them, especially, especially if, for example, um, so this is a bit more implementation specific, but um, declarative link capturing is, is only capturing in browser links and URL handlers is actually only capturing uh, operating system links. So links from native applications in the OS. Um, and it's doing that via the fact that operating system is normally just going to launch Chrome with a URL. And so we're capturing that startup URL uh, and redirecting it to a, a web app instead of a browser window, um, given user permission. Um, where was I going with that? Oh yeah, so so startup performance time is is critical. Um, one of the one of the constraints of the implementation is 
because you're launching Chrome, this, this URL could be in the context of any, any user web app. Um, and to load all the profiles of Chrome, all the like startup, all those, load those databases, everything is too much to do as startup. So they've got, they've got other mechanisms to, to make this fast at, at startup time. And so running a service worker for every single web app would be, or every, every web app in scope would be quite a, quite a burdensome task to do at startup. Uh, I think we're time. So, uh, that's it.